So, <clears throat> there you go, Martha. <laughs> I'll do the welcome this morning since we're doing things strange because I said so. I'm the pastor. I'm Pastor Grace, and we welcome you here to Flora Presbyterian Church. Martha is our lay leader this morning. But because of the time change, people haven't changed their clocks. And so I said, let's sit in the comfortable chairs here in the library fellowship area. And so that's what we're doing. And when you go to seminary and get your divinity degree, you can make decisions like that too. <laughs> Martha, would you start us off? Welcome. Uh, our first song will be from the pra uh, Praise and Worship, a book the loving kindness and after that page 82 open our eyes thy loving kindness page 120 all right here we go love thy loving kindness is better than life thy loving kindness is better than life My ninth at 6 p.m. at the Delphi Presbyterian Church and we will have a special guest uh, Sam Samuel Aberson he's a uh, part of the movement Jews for Jesus now we've had we've been wanting this forever yes. is that correct yes and we will have a free will offering taken up and there is going to be limiting limited seating so Sally from the uh, Florida Presbyterian Church has some tickets, and if you are wanting to go, she's she will give you a ticket, and that's to keep track of how many people are going to be there and how much we should uh, prepare for our Seder meal. Did you want to talk about? 
Yes, um, this will be a little bit different than the one that I led two years ago. This is by, um, his Hebrew name is Shmuel Abramson, and uh, he is coming, he is originally from Israel, and um, has lived in the States for several years, and became a Christian, um, and is his whole ministry and mission, he has been to Moody College uh, in Chicago, and um, I can't remember which seminary he attended right now off the top of my head, um, but he is well versed in the, the Bible and is a uh, minister, and his ministry is towards Orthodox Jews learning that the Messiah has come. And so he will come and will show us Christ in the Passover, but he will be doing it differently than what I did it. So do not expect the same, <laughs> the same thing. He he will be doing it. Uh, so uh, the tickets are free. Like I said, there is seating is limited, so you will need a ticket to get in. So please see Sally for that ticket. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's exciting. Yes, that's very exciting. We Looking forward to that on March 29th at 6 p.m. Uh, the other one of the other announcements of our church we had a soup supper last uh, Saturday and um, because of, of COVID it was drive-by drive-by soup so um, we made over six hundred dollars and this will go to the Oasis and the mission trip and, and stuff like that so we thank you um, for all the generosity this church um, shows us and let's see any other announcements not that I'm aware of I will I have a, a sheet today that has sign up places for scripture reader and sign up places for lay leader but since we have so few here I will be passing that around again next Sunday and hopefully we'll have more here so that we can get people signed up through the end of May and then beginning of June, we'll pass it around again. So you can put me beginning down for scripture reader. Okay. okay. For next week too. Well, whenever, just let me know. Yeah. You know. Well, Don't yeah. Surprise you. Next week, I, I, yeah, you are already sent you to church it. and you say, here, are you are supposed to read? Watch on. Some of the other announcements. Um, there's a play practice, 2 p.m., uh, Delphi. Um, it's a great, we're so looking forward to this play. Yes. This is a wonderful play. Um, it's about uh, people meeting, the women meeting Mary and, and talking to her about how Jesus Christ has changed their life and changed the world. And uh, it's a wonderful uh, play. It's it's going to be a uh, Good Friday at Delphi. Yes. Right. Okay. And the Bible studies are still going on. Uh, Twelve o'clock um, Monday. Uh, the study is Exodus. And remember that St. Patrick's Day is the seventeenth. Uh, that's Wednesday. Uh, Oasis is still going on. Thursday, 5.30 Bible study uh, at the home of Tony and Pastor Grace, uh, five, uh, 5.30 on Thursday. Yeah. Um, and that's Second Kings we start this week. Second Kings, awesome. Uh, bell rehearsal, same time, uh, 9.30 on Saturday, and the choir practices right after that. Uh, 1030 and I believe that the choir will be singing next Sunday yes okay any other announcements bring something up. Okay. Um, minute for mission like we said we had raised uh, over six hundred dollars from the soup uh, uh, the supper uh, part of that will be going to the uh, mission and we have been in communication with uh, uh, the Christian church just informally and we were saying let's get together let's get our youth together together and have a uh, a local mission project going yes. on yes so I think that's exciting uh, I'm not committing uh, the Christian church right. or anything like that but 
we're just getting that out there, right? Okay. Let's say in unison the um, opening prayer. Great, Great triune God, we have gathered here in your name as an act of faith, believing that you are not only among us, but that you love us. It is often hard to recognize your love, see your mercy, and feel your presence. Help us today in our worship that we might be transparent to your grace as you reveal yourself to each one of us. Amen. Since the hymn we have listed next, we would have to have the screen for, let's turn to page 99 in our praise and worship book. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. truth of God. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. Those who confess their sins with a sincere heart have been forgiven of their sins. And all God's people said, thank, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Page number two, or 92. <laughs> in our praise and worship book which is psalm five beautiful psalm of prayer could you give us a note first give ear to my words O lord give Prayer concerns. 
from the Delphi Church wish to add theirs. Um, John Gingrich is still having problems with his hand. He was having uh, more swelling in his hand and so he's needing prayers for that. Um, and Karen Schnepp was asking for prayers for her father who had fallen this week and um, she's just real concerned. They're now asking for different family members to stay the night with him. So the family's going to need to be making some decisions about his care. Are there prayer concerns? Here. Jam me that pencil, please. You can mention Beth's mom. Yes, Beth's mother, our church secretary, her mom uh, was taken to the hospital this week and was placed in ICU. They think she may have a blood clot in her lung. So please keep uh, Mrs. Zoopman in prayer. We need to remember in Janice uh, uh, Johnson, Janice Johnson, she, uh, maybe Martha can tell you more about it, but she is in ICU the way I understand it in Florida. Yeah, she went to Florida. Uh, she's been there for like a week. Uh, her blood pressure was dangerously low and she was uh, sent to ICU at the nearest hospital. I believe she's out of it now, but she needs our prayers. Um, we need to find a good cardiologist to take care of what, you know, find out what's going on and, mm -hmm. and uh, get her on the road to recovery. Yes. Are there others? Okay. Yeah, Barbara. I'm going to ask for prayer for my daughter and grandson, just that they are drawn to God, that they would understand His Word, read His Word. They're just drawn to Him and live by His Word. Let us go before the Lord. Dearest Heavenly Father, we come to you this day to praise and worship your holy name. While we may be few, our voices are strong. Our love for you is even stronger. And we know that you love us, you care for us, you are watching over not only those of us who are gathered here, but those who are at home, those who are sick, those who are traveling. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, that we may enjoy the sunshine and the beauty of the crocuses as they have begun to pop up all over. Lord, in the midst of this beauty, our hearts can be heavy as loved ones fall ill. We are so thankful, Lord, that you have eased the illness from the COVID virus. We are grateful for the vaccine that has come forth and for it being so abundant. We truly are thankful. But Lord, we ask for your hand of healing to be with Janice. Lord, that you would place before her the doctor that she needs to have that could help control her blood pressure the cardiologist that is needed. Lord, that you, would, that you would heal her, that she would be able to return home from Florida in good health, that she may be able to serve you to the fullest extent. Lord, we pray for Beth as well as for her mom, that Beth would have patience, that Beth would 
Have this as a time for her family to grow even closer unto you as they pray for their for her mom. Lord, you know where that blood clot is. You know it's in the lung. You can dissolve it. You can show the doctors how to take care of it so that it would not travel and cause any more damage. Lord, you know that her mom needs to stop smoking. And it has been Beth's prayer for many years now that her mother would stop. May this be the catalyst that would create that desire to end her smoking addiction. Lord, we pray for Barbara's daughter and grandson. Lord, we know that they have been raised in the faith, that they have been taught from childhood that you are Lord and that you love them, but they have chosen a different path. But Lord, the path they are on is still within your sight. And we know that you see them and that you long to draw them back unto you. Put people in their, in their midst that can say the words that have been said to them so many times, but can say them in a way that they would listen. Would say them maybe differently, in a different tone, in a, in a different style in which all of a sudden they get it. That they would hear your voice and it would resonate with them. Lord, that these relationships would be restored. For we know you can. We pray that you are willing. We ask all of this in Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Would you pray with me uh, the prayer of illumination that is in our bulletin? God, God your, your love for us is steadfast. You could not love us more, and you will not love us less because of what we do. May we hear of your redeeming love and accept it into our daily lives and fill our very being. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And this is actually, I think, the King James Version, which we don't hear very much. If you want me to read it not in King James. That would be easier. All right. I'll even give you the large print. Okay, hey, look at that. <laughs> don't even need my bifocals of this. <laughs> As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, the devil. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. 
It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so what Miss Tony just read? You are paying attention. <laughs> okay, so she was reading from Ephesians. It said, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions. Got a clue what that means? Buried in your sins. You're just so wrapped up in your sins. You're just <laughs> dead. Okay, when you follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, who's that? The devil. You have to say it louder. The devil, yes. The devil. And the spirit who is now at work in all those who are disobedient. Are you disobedient? You are disobedient? Are you disobedient? Sometimes? Man! you used to be so cute. <laughs> You're so cute, but I mean, you, you, you used to, you are just like, I'm not disobedient. And now you're just like, yeah, I am. Man, they're growing up. They're growing up. And the you've taught us not to lie. Yes, I've taught you not to lie. And and your your pastor across the street has taught you not to lie. Okay. So, for it is by grace you have been saved. Is that by me you have been saved? Because my name's Grace? No. By whose grace have you been saved? God's grace. Okay. So, it is by grace you have been saved. And so, it's by faith. In God, you have been saved. Okay, so faith in who? In God. Faith in God's Son, whose name is Jesus. Jesus. And it's believing that He is the Son. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling teeth here. Okay, so it's believing. Do you just have to believe that He's the Son? What else do you have to do? <laughs> and accept him as your Lord. Big L. Lord of your life. I know. All that. And so, and I know you girls have... have have done that and I know it's kind of a tough time for y'all now and it'll get tougher and harder and that's just like wonderful news isn't it <laughs> no. yeah. and so and it'll get harder the older you get Barbara is it easier for you now to make than it was when you were 14 is it easier now? Uh-uh. It's a, it's a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, is it easier for you now that you're past 70 than it was when you were it's hard. 30? It's harder. It's harder. Yeah. 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 You have more choices now. Yeah, there's more choices. Yeah. It's like, but this is fun, <laughs> and this is you know, God wants me to have fun. It's like, yeah, God wants you to have fun. But it's like, is it good fun 
or is it not so good fun? Okay, does it please God or does it make him sad? It's kind of, that's kind of what it boils down to. But, you girls, I guess what I want to say to you two girls this morning, and it just hit me what I really want to say to you, is no matter what anyone says, no matter what, you are a child of God. No one can change that. No one can take that away. No matter what happens, no matter what you may do, no matter what somewhere, some down, down the road, no one can take that away from you. You got it? You can always turn around, no matter what, and say, I'm a child of God, and walk right back. All right, let's pray. Oh, dearest Lord, I thank you for these girls that you have brought into our midst this day. I ask that you would watch over all of those that are kids of this church that are at home and that will be watching this later. That they would also know that they are your children and that when they come to a point where they have asked you into their hearts that no matter what they may say or do, that there's always time for them to turn around and say, I am still a child of God, and I want to come back, and you welcome them home. Lord, watch over them, keep them safe, and we thank you for them. Thank you for entrusting them into our care. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, love you guys. All right. Now then. Okay, there's a lot packed into Ephesians there in that passage. Let me get my right notes here. I had so much fun with this. My fingers aren't having fun, but I had fun with this. So in Ephesians, chapter 3, 14 through 21. So, one of the first things that God, one of God's purposes, one of the first things was that he wants to transform those who are spiritually dead to become alive in Christ. It's not just that he wants to transform you to be religious, to be something. He wants to transform you to become alive in Christ. It's, to, it's the difference between, have you ever heard about... Uh, Failure to thrive. Failure to thrive. It's this is this thing. It's it's like uh, you might have a plant. I you know I've had some plants in the house that yeah they're alive but they're not thriving. <laughs> you know they're hanging on but they're not thriving. I want you to be really alive, to fully thrive in Christ. And wants to get you away from the influence of society's ungodly attitudes, away from Satan who works in those who disobey God, and from the, our fleshly, self-centered human nature that craves the wrong things. The wrong things, like for those who are diabetic, that crave all that sugar. Am I meddling? <laughs> uh, for those who yeah you're giving me a dirty look okay so, <laughs> yeah it's it's those things that yeah a little sugar is okay but for the diabetic and just like oh that one donut's okay but then it's like okay well what does that second donut do what does that second or third donut do for those of us who are overweight, what does it do to our knees? What does it do to our low back? What does it do to us, our hips? Us being able to move around. All right. Those temptations. None of us are probably, we're probably, most of us, except for the girls, are probably past the age of being tempted into a whole lot. You know, I, I don't expect Martha here to be tempted into going out and, I mean, Martha, you're a gorgeous woman. You're a lovely woman.
but you know your your husband is just fantastic and awesome but I, I don't see you being tempted into going astray it, it's it's not that there's not offers I just don't see you as that type of woman okay and I know the light keeps flinking on and off here sorry about that so but that's um, that's something that some of us are kind of past those temptations but there are other temptations there for us the temptation to not pray or to shortcut our prayers to just say oh God just take care of everybody and go on without taking time to pray what was needed to be prayed for because I don't have time I just run out of time. So that is those temptations for us in these days. But now let's look at the book of John. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of John, chapter 2, chapter 3 rather, verses 14 through 21. And we're going to say this together in the King James, because I know you all have it memorized in the King James. If you don't, I'll be shocked. Uh, because I think we all are still of an age that we memorized it in um, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever... Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I started to say For again. God sent not his, his Son into the world to condemn the world, but, but that the world would be in Okay, we got it. All right. Now that I'm going to take it piece by piece, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm starting to say take it apart, but that's not right. I'm going to take it piece by piece in the NIV. Because um, it's just... It's so beautiful. All right, so John, starting at the 14th verse, backing up just a little bit. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Now, I think a lot of you know the story in Exodus, uh, but some of the folks watching this may not know that in Exodus, uh, one of the times when they were going through the desert after they'd been rescued from Egypt, when they were grumbling and complaining to Moses and to God about, oh, we don't have this, we don't have that, blah, blah, blah. And God's like, how long are we going to, you know, Moses is like, how long are we going to listen to them complain? And so God sent poisonous snakes after them. And so some of them were bitten by the poisonous snakes and they died or became very ill. And so then they started, oh, Lord, save us. Moses, do something. Lord, save us. And so Moses said, okay, Lord, they're repenting. And so God told Moses to put a bronze snake on a, rock, on a stick and hold it up. And for everyone who looked on that symbol of death, and believed would be saved and those who did were saved and were made well just so just like in that manner Jesus was to be lifted up that symbol of death Jesus was lifted up on the cross and all who believe in Jesus as the Son of God lifted up on that cross that died for us is to be saved that um, everyone who believes in him may have eternal life for God so loved the world now then God loved the world who is that me yeah me you is it the people who were throwing bombs at us is it the people who are plotting terrorist attacks against different, our soldiers? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. He loves them. 
part of that Ephesians passage was that God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. God has, you know, God is, has wrath, has justifiable wrath, and has unending mercy towards his people. Okay? And so it is also, getting all my notes here together. God has both holy anger and against sin and merciful love for sinners. And so that is where here it says all people against the, for the whole world. He came for the whole world. That was his purpose. And, and whoever believes in him, whoever believes, okay, that's anybody. Anybody who will believe in him. Not just who knows that he is the son of God, because even the devil knows that, okay, but who believes in him and accepts him as Lord, okay. Shall not perish. Oh, okay, God's all over the world. That He gave His one and only Son. All right, we are the adopted children. Jesus is the only begotten Son. Right? The only begotten Son. Now I'm breaking this down because people are watching this that don't know all of this. Okay? So the only begotten Son. To die for us. That is how He gave Him. He gave Him to be born to live, to minister, to preach the gospel, and then to die for us. The only begotten. And that whoever believes is anyone who believes. Believes that Jesus is the Christ, is the Messiah, the one who was sent to save us. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. All right? To perish is, yes, the body dies, but the soul never dies. You have eternal life forever in the kingdom with God. It is eternal forever. Your soul lives on. And then in that resurrection day, the body is reunited with the soul. I don't know what we'll look like. Those who have been dead for thousands of years and are nothing but dust now, their bodies are reunited. It's put back together. God can do that. God can do whatever he wants to do because he's God, right? Okay. Now here come some tough parts. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Jesus. Not to condemn the world, but don't we want him to? <laughs> don't we want him to condemn parts of the world? Don't we want him to just say there's parts of the world that are just so evil, Lord, get rid of it? But that's not why Jesus came. He came to save all of us. He came to save everyone who is willing to repent, who is willing to say he is Jesus and to ask them to be Lord of their lives. To ask him to take over their lives. Whether we like it or not. We may not like it that Jesus saved some people. We may think that some people deserve eternal damnation and eternal punishment, but it's not our call. It's God's call, and he sent Jesus for all. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Those who are not going to believe have condemned themselves. And to me, I cannot imagine the loneliness that that must be. 
The Loneliness of the Soul. That even in a crowd, you're alone. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Everyone who does evil hides from the light. It doesn't mean that they don't come out in the daylight. It means that they, they don't want to come into the church. They don't want to come in and they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about they don't want to hear scriptures. They don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear that kind of light. They just want to stay where they are. They don't want you to come into their places of darkness, spiritual darkness. Not physical darkness, but their places of spiritual darkness. Because they're comfortable there and they don't want to be disturbed. But we have to go there. We have to share with them the light of God's love. We have to share with them that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That the joy of the Lord is what keeps us going. That the light of God's love is the most amazing thing possible, it is stronger than any drug or any alcohol ever made. That it is stronger than any desire ever created, any lust, anything. That it is better to be with God is all consuming. The idea of walking with the Lord for all eternity is the most amazing, amazing thing. To please Him is a joy. I don't have a sense of wrath when I displease Him, but I have a sense of I'm sorry. And I can go to him and say, I'm sorry. Just like I can with, with a friend. You know, I can say, I'm sorry. I, I hurt you. I'm sorry I did this. Because I know I hurt you. And I did this against you. But I know that our friendship is strong enough our love for one another is strong enough that we're okay and that we will get past this. And I know God's love is strong enough that no matter what I do, He still loves me and He still loves each of you. And he still loves everyone and is waiting for you to come to Him and to say, God, take me, hold me, love me, for I want to be your child. I want to be your child. Take me as your own. Amen and amen. My friends, this is the simple bread and the simple cup where we share together in the Lord's Feast, also known as the Lord's Supper or as Communion. And at this time in the service when we take the bread and we remember that on the night that our Lord was betrayed, that after the Passover meal that he shared with his friends, that he took the bread and after having blessed it, he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Each time you take of this, remember me. And in the same manner, 
He took the cup, saying, this is the new covenant spilt in my blood. Each time you take of this, remember me. My friends, this simple meal reminds us of the Lord's sacrifice for us. And as we await for his return on the day of the glorious, that glorious day when he comes to take us back unto his own, let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would be in with us with this bread and this cup as we take it into ourselves, that our hearts would be nourished and we would be filled with your spirit that we would be reminded of all that you have done for us. Guide us, Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us sing. Um, uh, let's do this by intention, and I will just bring it around. If everybody would stand, and we will sing, um, Let Us Break Bread Together. <clears throat> Let us break bread together. Father, we thank you for this feast that you have granted us. We thank you for how it has nourished our souls. We ask that you would bless us as we continue to go through this week, as we continue through this service, as we seek to serve you in body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Page number 115. <clears throat> Jesus, 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 there's just something Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Amen. Please remain standing to receive the benediction. May the Lord truly bless your very soul. May he be in your heart and your mind as you go through this day. May his presence be evident in your lives to everyone you meet. May his grace and mercy be seen in your face to those who need to, to know that grace and mercy still abound. Amen and amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord.